Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is JJ. Hope you guys are well. So today it's just a video to give you guys an update on my latest project to build the Tamiya 1 to 12 scale Ducati 1199 Panigale S. So to be totally honest with you guys, I actually haven't done anything since my last video that was uploaded last week. I haven't even um, reopened the the model kit box, if I'm brutally honest. Um, this is because I haven't really had time um, on doing my hobby uh, because my full-time job has been keeping me uh, busy. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment, so I really struggle to find time to spend on building the model kit. But nevertheless, I will give you guys um, a slight update. Um, this is because I have a slightly change of plan about this model kit. You guys want to guess what it is? Nope, I'm not changing the, the color scheme. I'm still sticking to the rose or red color. Nope, I haven't got another um, version of the motorbike to build. I'll let you guys know. So what I've done is I have purchased the exact same bike again. So these two kits are identical. There's absolutely no difference between them. So the reason why I have decided to do that is because first of all, I have been watching quite a lot of YouTube videos about other YouTuber or artists really putting the time and effort and their heart in building the Ducati Panigale S. So, I mean, the the different variety, mainly from, you know, they changed the, the side cowl and the main fairing and the tailed color to a different color. Most commonly you will see the Russell um, red and the matte black version. You also find like yellow, that's blue, that's silver, and as well as a combination of different colors on the motorbike. So, I mean, I guess that is the beauty of being in this hobby, right? You just do whatever you want to customize your own model kit. So, um, going back to the YouTube videos, um, I've watched a lot of artists, you know, doing the, the graphics and the, the paintwork uh, in their own way. They all look very impressive. Um, however, I know there are a lot of people out there, you guys might be um, one of them, who would like to see what exactly this kit from Tamiya will look like straight out from the box. I know in my last video, I've already showed you guys the content. So it's mainly with white color, silver, or a gray color and black as well as some clear parts and that's about it you can't really gauge what the motorbike is going to look like once you spend hours in putting everything together so the closest video i've managed to find um i believe is this a um a youtuber who built the tamir kit in the ducati superleggera v4 so the V4 Superleggera, Superleggera looks pretty much similar to the Panigale S. Basically, it's just a super lightweight version. You will find there are more canache um, on the side um, cowl. And I can't remember whether they have done anything different on the main fairing as well. But basically, just to make the bike more aerodynamic and it's a, a super lightweight bike. I believe the engine area is slightly different as well as well the the rims pattern or the design is slightly different so that's the closest video i could find that someone have put together the kit with minimal effort but then again i believe the youtuber have also put on the water transfer um on the on the body part as well which looks quite good but just mainly in the very very plain color 
So my plan with the two kits um, are mainly I will use the, the first kit that I purchased and I will just spend the minimum effort and time basically just to snip out all of the, the parts, cut out all the um, excessive um, plastic, make it a little bit more tidy and then I just use the um, glue or cement just to put the bike together. I won't even um, bother to put the water transfer stickers so you guys will get to see the bare bone um, of the uh, Tamiya kit straight out from the box. Um, you will still need some basic tools, obviously. You will need the, the glue, the Tamiya cement, um, presumably. You, you all have that. Um, you need a pair of scissors or snippers to cut out the parts and also to trim out the, the excess um, plastic attached to the plastic parts that you cut out. You could always use a craft knife, it might be easier. So those are pretty much the, the three main things that you will need in order to put the bike together. So hopefully it will turn out well and it shouldn't take me that long. Um, I plan to do my next video of the kind of finished product of the Tamiya kit without any um, colouring or any details on it, just straight out from the box, put all the parts together to make it look like a bike, basically. And then the second um, kit, I will be spending my time, my effort, and, you know, referring to a lot of photographs that I could find online and try to make the outcome of the of the build as much details as possible. And then I will have the two bikes side by side for you guys to see the, the difference between, you know, something that you spend a few hours compared to something that you spend a few weeks or might be months eventually to get it done. Um, I think that might be quite useful uh, for some of you guys if you just want to gauge, you know, without the all the necessary equipment and tools, what's the outcome would be um, if you purchase one of this um, Tamiya kit um, without wanting to spend too much time. I can tell you the outcome of n the bare minimum effort is still look pretty good. I can tell you that based on my experience from watching the other YouTube video of the guy building the Ducati Superleggera V4, it looks really good. Um, so because there were no one else have done the 1199 Panigale S, so hopefully I will be the first person to do it. And then you guys will be one of the first people to, to see it as its bare bone. So anyway, as I mentioned last time, I'll show you guys again very quickly. Inside the kit, you will have some tires, some cabling, screwdrivers, the coil, and the slot of the washers and some different sizes and length of screws. There's some clear parts mainly for the uh, windshield, the headlamp cluster, the brake light as well as some wheels on the bike stand and then the main body is just a white color and then you have the uh, main frame and the wheels they are in black color and then last and not least, the main engine parts are all in a metallic grey colour moulding. And then you have the um, technical tips, the know-how, the instruction sheets, as well as you have the very reflective mirror for the bike, as well as some water transfer stickers as well. So that is my first kit that I'm planning to just build out of um, the box without any detailing or colouring. And then if I put this aside, my next project would be building the 
exact same bike, but this time I will be spending a lot more time and effort. And also this kit, I have also purchased two extra parts. So first one, the item number is Tamiya 12657. So this is specifically for the Ducati 1199 Panigale S and it is the front fork set. So basically what you will get is you get the slightly shorter stem of the front fork. There's some additional detailing for the handlebar area. The main fork, this is made out of metal or might be aluminium. And then the bottom end of the shock, there's more metal parts. And then this is, I believe is the, the reservoir for the um, rear suspension coil. And then there are more slots as well as, let me see if I can show you guys. There are some different, well, actually, no, there's only black washers for the suspension front fork. Uh, there's also some chrome metal ring for the bottom end um, of the shocks. And then the blue caps, I think that goes with these two silver parts, which are for the handlebar detailing. And then you see there are a lot of tiny little screw or vivet. So they are to go on both sides of the front brake disc just to give that extra details um, on the front fork and front brakes area. So this bit of detailed up parts is quite expensive as i mentioned to buy the 1199 panigale s kit it cost about 36 pound um that's from amazon and to buy this detailed up parts alone this is another 30 pound so it's almost the same price as the full bike kit so it is quite expensive but i've read a lot of feedback and comment from other purchasers they said it is definitely worth getting it because it does add the extra details and the shelf presence onto the onto the superbike so hopefully they are not wrong and then the second parts that i've purchased in addition is tamiya 12677 so this is just some additional flexi host flexi cable so I paid about four or five pound. Again, it is from Amazon. So the coil is about two meter in length. And I believe they are slightly thinner than the one that came with the, the kit. So let me try and find it to show you guys. So inside there, you see there are some Flexi hose already, which I believe they are one millimeter in diameter. These one, they are 0 0.8 millimeters, so it's slightly smaller. So it gives me slightly finer details, and I could also add some extra detailing um, on the bike because if you guys have noticed, those two parts for fitting onto the handlebar, you also need to run additional piping to connect to the lower end of the front shock. The rest of the content inside the, the kit is exactly identical to the other one. You've got the, the white molding, the gray molding, the black, and then obviously you have the side mirror stickers and the water transfer and then the tech tip sheets and the extra information sheets on the Ducati bike of the real bike 
and the construction menu. So it's all there. They're all exactly the same as the original kit, apart from these two parts, which I've purchased in additional. So hopefully I will be able to find time to get this kit um, ready uh, in the next few weeks or months. Who knows? So next thing is I will show you guys the equipment and the tools that I have um, kind of pulled together um, ready to do this project. So first of all, I have this cutting mat. This is by Enzio. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but yeah, it is in A3 size. So it's 42 by 27 centimeters and it is constructed with five layers. As you can see, the top and very bottom layer are very thin and then there are another three layers in between. So total five and it's made in UK, obviously. And I purchased it via Amazon. Again, I think I pay something in between six to seven pound, which is quite good. The quality is pretty good to me. It's quite heavy as well. Definitely has some weight to it. And if this is double-sided self-healing cutting mat. So let's flip to the other side. This is pretty much the same thing, just different color. And then there are different markings to assist you with your art and craft stuff, I believe. Okay, so it's very important to, to have one of these mat to work on. Um, especially if you're planning to use a craft knife or any sort of knife, sharp knife, to cut into the water transfer stickers or carbon fiber decal or even, you know, just cutting out the, the parts from the plastic molding. It's always good to work on a, a mat rather than working on, the, on your table. You don't want to damage a table like that for sure. So what other stuff do I need to prepare my model? So obviously I mentioned it last time, you will need some um, detailing markers. So these ones are from when I was building my Gundam. I still have quite a few Gundams um, in model kit form that I need to build, but I need to find time whenever to do it. So these might be useful um, for building the Tamiya bike. So I've got two black ones and two gray ones and they are with very fine tips and I've used them before. They are very good um, for drawing the uh, panel lines. So might be a good idea to use this. And if you want to do it properly and also slightly easier, make your life easier. You don't have to use the um, panel markers. You could use one of this. It's also made by Tamiya. This is the panel line Axian color black. It's a very, very um, dilute liquid, as you can see inside the bottle. So this will easily help you outline the panel lines as well as other details and indentation on the plastic molding. Definitely and strongly recommend you to get this if you haven't got one ready. You won't be disappointed. It will make your life so much easier with this detailer. And then what's next? Uh, okay, let's stick to the bottles for now. You also need the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. So this is pretty much the, the glue that you will require uh, to stick the parts together. I specifically prefer the Extra Thin Cement by Tamiya. 
because it is so much easier to control um, with the application of the of the cement or the glue. You can see the applicator or the brush is very very fine and very pointy. So again, another items that would make your life a lot easier for the um, bike build project. And then I have the Tamiya acrylic paint thinner, the X-20A. So you will need this to kind of dilute the acrylic paint. The ratio you will have to refer um, to, to the internet depends on how you would like to apply your color, where you're ap applying um, the color through airbrushing or paint brushing. You will need this or you can also go for the cheaper option which is just normal white spirit but with the professional model build I would always refer to the Tamiya thinner rather than using the, the spirit these normal white spirit you can buy them from hardware store um, I purchased this from Amazon again um, I just read through some um, customers feedback I decided to pick this one because I believe based on the feedback um, people say this is this doesn't have the the very strong smell compared to the other one so I thought I would give this a go so I'm sure I'll, I'll be needing this and then I have this which has arrived only a couple of days ago. Um, this is the airbrush cleaner. So basically when you do um, airbrushing, after each time you use the airbrush, it is always good to clean the paintbrush or the airbrush properly. Make sure you clean out all the colors um, inside the pen or the airbrush. And you also will need this to relubricate that pin inside the airbrush. So you definitely need something like this if you want to maintain your airbrush properly. And then the next item is this high coat, the perfect finish. So I have previously used this clear coat. It's a clear lacquer. Um, to apply it on my 1 to 18 model cars. Um, they worked really well, um, but this one is just a clear coat. Um, if you want to have a shiny service, you have to pick the, the glossy lacquer version. This one is just clear and it is really good. The um, only thing that you need to be fully aware of is make sure the paint is fully cure overnight give it 24 48 hours also the same as any water transfer decal you have to let them dry completely before applying the clear coat um okay other stuff mainly for my ducati bike project so these are the colors that i will require in order to get the the bike complete there are some gold ones as well so these are basically the primary color for the main body for the rear suspension as well as any other panels I would like to put it in yellow color Obviously, you could mix the color together to get a new color. For example, if you mix yellow and blue, you'll get a green color. So you could, you could easily mix the colors together um, to get a new color effect. Um, the blue ones, I think I possibly would use this mainly for detailing the handlebar um, details. And maybe I could use this mixing with some silver color 
for airbrushing the exhaust to give the the burnt effect. Gold one, I think, is mainly for the uh, engine block covers, as well as some of the screws and maybe the brake calipers. But then I have to mix this color with other color to get the the correct color coding. Flat black. So this is the matte black. I think is mainly for the bike framework and some other panels and then the gloss black again probably I will require this color at some point and then I have the flat aluminium and flat sorry this is a chrome silver so those are the the primary color that I know I would definitely need but I might need to go to my color stand uh, for other color um, if I if I need to mix them together to get uh, a better result and then last but not least you might want to get yourself the Tamiya X22 so this is a clear liquid so my plan is to use this on the airbrush to give a clear coat finish on the acrylic paint so obviously you could use the high coat as well um, but I think that would just give you a pretty standard flat finish whereas this one it will give you a kind of high gloss finish and I have planned to use this together with the Tamiya uh, polishing compound um, that actually um, still haven't been delivered yet. Um, I also found it from Amazon. I think they are about £20. It comes with two tubes. One is the fine polishing compound and then the other one is the finishing compound. Um, actually, that's two items outstanding. So with the compounds, I also purchased the Tamiya polishing cloth. So you need those cloth to work together with the compound um, in order to achieve the high gloss finish on your uh, finish panel so there's actually two items that is still outstanding here but anyway and then you will need the kind of nail varnish clear coat if you want to cover uh, a small area that you have painted maybe like a small um, screw that you put in um, it's just a silver dot or you try to paint the silver rivet so it's good to have a top coat just to cover um, the paint to protect it from wearing out and what else let me grab the other tools give me one second I will be back very shortly okay so what's next is this I've shown you guys in my last video of already so this is just a model kit um, toolbox um, I mainly just keep the polishing tools inside as you can see there are different sizes of files uh, there's also this electric polish or drill thing that I didn't manage to show you guys last time um, so basically this is battery powered by two AA batteries and this is just a very fine polishing tip and you just press down the button and then it will just rotate so you can just polish some very fine details on a very specific area so it's very useful to get one of these and I think yeah it also comes with some filing tools as well if you want to grind down anything but this is not very strong and I don't know exactly how long the battery is going to last so it is better to get the proper polishing tools um, if you happen to have one And then you probably need something like a Loctite 
So as you'll be able to find this from almost everywhere, even from your local supermarket. I'm sure you can find a super glue. I picked this one specifically because uh, you could use that on multi services. So metal, bone china, um, plastic, rubber, leather and wood. Um, I needed this over the Tamiya cement because some of the metal um, parts from the detailed up kit, um, you will need a different type of cement or glue in order to stick those metal parts onto the, the plastic body. So this will come in handy for sure. And then something that you might not need for this um, bike build, but it is always handy to have, is you have this glue stick, or we call it Pritch stick in the UK, and also the normal white glue. You can find this easily from Art and Craft Shop. So I'll put them in the background as well. And then some double sided sticky tape pad, it's always handy. Uh, when it comes to airbrushing and then a small tray um, to put all the cut out parts bits and bolts rubber band always comes in handy and then q-tips you will always find this useful when applying the water transfer sticker or decal And then some other cutting tools. So this is like a very flat blade. Um, it might come in handy, you know, after you have cemented something together, you might want to use this tool to, to pry it open uh, the two parts. If you have made a mistake or you want to make some amendment, it's good to have. And then you will need the craft knife. Be careful with this. It is very, very sharp. So you use this to cut out any excess plastic bits from the molding. Very handy tool to have. And then you need the snipper or the cutter to cut out the parts from the plastic molding it gives a very clean flat cut of the parts it's a good tool to have this is quite a basic one uh, you can buy a very nice one made by Tamiya and it costs you about 30 pound give or take but I think this one is good enough for myself because I just mainly use this um, cutter to cut out the parts from the molding and then I will use the craft knife to trim um, the plastic part to give a better finish and then I'll use the very fine filed or sanding paper to give it a, a smoother finish. And then last and not least you will need some tweezers. It's very good for handling small plastic parts, especially when you have the detailed up kit, you will need these kind of tools to handle the small um, vivid parts, or even for applying water slice decal. They're very useful. And then, as I mentioned last time, some weights. These are weight with um, sticky tape on the other side. So you don't need to use super glue or anything to stick them. You just peel them off from the backing and then they will stick on whatever surface that you would like to apply them. So my plan is to insert some of these weight inside the engine block. Um, or if possible, I'll try and fit a couple inside a fuel tank as well, just to give the model bike some weight and I also will be using this on the next item which is 
is the fixed base for doing your airbrushing. So you normally see these two items come as a kit. So you have the base for you to stick the, the clip stick on to apply the airbrushing. So these one, they have the alligator clip at the top and also have the plastic cap on them so that it doesn't leave the the teeth or the bite mark on the plastic model but I might have to remove them after a little while because they might become annoying I'll probably lose them anyway but like this set has come with 20 of them which is plenty and the end of the stamp you basically just put that through to those holes and then they will stand and as you have noticed there are two different sizes of holes on the base plate so they actually are a perfect fit for smaller pointy toothpick I'm referring to the one with both end that's pointy as well as the slightly larger and longer skewer so they fit perfectly on this kind of stand. This is a new one that I've purchased. I previously had the black one already, which I have already sprayed on tons of different colors on, but I just thought I would just buy um, a new set that I will be using for specifically for my Tamiya um, model building, rather than mixing it with my um, scale model cars. So, You'll find this handy for sure. Um, one thing that I've, I've noticed from reading the comments on this, people were saying this base is basically a bit too light. Is it just a plastic molded box with not a lot of weight? And then the comments that I've, I've read is people putting in the skewers and then with the part, uh, with the different parts that has been sprayed on, it just feels a bit too top heavy and sometimes if you're not careful the whole stand might tip to one side so the solution is this this will come in handy because they have the sticky tape on the other side you can always peel out the larger ones maybe four of the larger ones and just stick them onto the four corners and that will add some extra weight um, onto the base plate so that the whole thing become more stable and then you will also need some very fine paint brushes that I've already introduced them to you guys last time for the very fine detailing I'll probably be mainly using the the three or maybe four of the finer brushes And in order to mix the acrylic paint together, it is always to mix them first before you pour the mixture um, of the color or acrylic color with the thinner. So it's always to, good to mix them up in a, a cup. So I bought shot glasses for the application and they are cheap and cheerful. You get them from supermarket Amazon local shops and they are very very handy and cheap so you can use them for once maybe a couple of times and then you could bin them and use a new one very handy to have and for mixing colors from the acrylic um, paint container it is always good to get yourself some pipettes so these draw out the different colors and then you drip them onto the, the shot glass to mix the color rather than just unscrewing the cap and then tip out the color. It just becomes a bit more messy. And this, again, is very cheap. And each of the pipettes has got the, the marking so you, you will know exactly how much in terms of volume you're getting from the um, paint container. It's good to have. 
So now I think I only have three more items to show you guys. The first one, no further introduction, you will definitely need the airbrush set. This one is very good um, for making um, models for hobbyists and it is relatively cheap to pick up. It costs about 70 to 80 pounds. You might be able to find it cheaper on eBay or um, a different brand, a different type of um, airbrush. So basically this is just a standard airbrush with the compressor that you could plug into the wall um, for it to work. Or this one specifically, um, you can use it wirelessly. By what I mean is you can pre-charge the compressor. It has a built-in uh, battery that would allow you to um, do airbrushing um, for about one and a half to two hours. Very handy to have. Oh, I'll just put it on the side. And then I also have this which is the Draper multi-tool kit. So this is mainly for cutting out parts, trimming, as well as, I think it's come with the polishing pad that I could use to polish the uh, side cowls or the front fairing as well as other parts. So that that's all the little bits that comes with the tool kit. which I'm sure I will find it very, very useful for building the Tamiya model kit. Um, again, this you can purchase from your local hardware store. Um, I actually picked this up during the sale, so it was actually quite cheap. I think I paid about £25 for this, but normally I think it would be a little bit more expensive, but it's definitely worth getting it. Uh, if you are serious about building model. Okay, now I think it is the last item on the tools and equipment um, on my list, which is this. So it is a variable speed rotary detail carver. So Basically, it is just a handheld tool. It's a mini drill that you could change the speed from high to low. And I purchased this specifically just for, well, I think it's mainly for one purpose, which I'll show you guys. If you have got the um, Tamiya kit, the brake disc, area or the actual rotor it comes in as a one piece molded plastic um, they have the indentation of the vented holes but they are not uh, through so you will need either a hand drill or a tool like this one just to make your life a bit easier you don't have to spend hours from drilling out this hole one by one by hand and it is the same for the rear brake disc as well so there's three together there's one at the end two for the front so this small little drill will definitely help me and make my life a lot easier um, when it comes to drilling out the holes to make the brake disc a bit more realistic actually let me show you guys right, here we go so this is the the molding of the brick disc and you can see it has the drilled holes indentation on it but they are not through so on the other side, it's just flat. So to make it more realistic, 
you might want to drill those holes out and same as the rear brick disc got tons and tons of holes on it and while we have the kit here let me show you the very small divots like these one these little guys they are to go around each corner on the brick disc so there's six here and then another six on the opposite side so inside this detailed up kit there are 12 or 13 rivets inside i think they gave you one extra one in case you you lose one or drop one so i think that conclude with everything so that's all of the stuff that you could see in front of you all the the tools the mat net the files the paintbrush pipettes um, as well as what you can't see on the camera on the right hand side here the the airbrush the mini drill as well as the multi tool kit for the polishing so that's pretty much everything that i think i would need for my own project obviously everyone's different you might not need as many uh, tools um, in order to achieve the outcome um, of the model build but i i mean based on my personal preference i would need almost every single items um, on this list uh, in order to complete the panigale s um, to kind of my expectation so i hope you guys find this um, video useful and informative um, again this is very subjective this is just to my personal preference obviously as i mentioned before you probably don't even need any of these tools apart from um, a pair of cutter and the tamir cement if you just want to build the bike straight out from the box without any coloring or any application of color or decals so i think i will end here i think i've pretty much covered everything um, that i think i will require to finish the well both of the motorbike build and i will keep you guys posted i guess um, possibly when I first finished the with my first kit of just building it straight out from the box, no coloring, no extra details, no water transfer stickers, just as people say, just black and white. Um, so I might do that once it is complete, or if I manage to find time to do a short update video during the the build of the the first project then i might do that but for now i think that's just it for me um i hope you guys have a good day and don't forget to like subscribe and ring the notification bell and if you guys have any questions or comment then feel free to drop a comment or your question below i'll come back to you like as soon as i can and until the next video, take care guys, have fun, and I will see you in my next video. Signing out now. Bye-bye.